Hey guys, this is Jesse with AverageJesse.com. It is mid-October here in Phoenix, Arizona, and I'm standing in front of my Roselle hibiscus plant. I've got some Egyptian spinach over here that's been doing rock solid all summer. Uh, but now it's time to harvest the Roselle hibiscus calyxes and start uh, dehydrating them to make tea or to make jams and jellies and things of that nature. I looked on YouTube for a video on how to process the calyxes to make jelly. I didn't really find a good one, so I'm gonna take you through the process start to finish from harvesting, preparation, uh, all the way through to canning. So a few things to note on these Roselle hibiscus plants. Uh, you will see these little tiny fruit buds up here, the, the calyxes, and that is where the flower will come out of. Uh, once the flower comes out, these calyxes will swell and get substantially larger as you can see down here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run through this entire plant and we're gonna harvest all of the calyxes that are of a pretty fairly large size, and that's what we're gonna to use to make our jelly. If you wanted to save some of these seeds for harvesting, you could pull off all the individual petals from the calyx and leave the seed pod underneath to develop, and that seed pod has seams in it, and that'll split, and you'll be able to see the seeds underneath if you wanna harvest it. Uh, but if you're not worried about saving seeds, you can just cut off the entire calyx. So I'm gonna go through and uh, clean all of the ripe fruits off of this plant and the one next to it, and I'll be right back. It took about five minutes to harvest both my plants. I've got a colander full here. There's probably 80 or so, I'd say, in here. Uh, my hands are stained from uh, harvesting these, which will happen. But one thing I wanted to point out is that I'm six foot tall, and here's one of my hibiscus plants. It's probably eight feet or so tall, and about five feet wide. So I originally planted this in a raised bed, but next season I'm gonna dig a hole almost like I would a fruit tree and plant it in there so it has room to spread out because it really blocked a lot of the sun uh, from some of the other plants that I had in my raised bed. And this thing has been in full, direct, all day, burning up 120 degree Arizona sun all summer and it's loving it. It's doing just fine. So I'd definitely recommend planting one of these if you're in the desert. One of the fortunate byproducts of the hibiscus is that it attracts a ton of bees. So if you want to figure out ways to get bees into your garden, plant a hibiscus. It's like waving a bright neon sign full of red flowers that says, hey bees, come here and all you can eat buffet. Uh, one of the unfortunate byproducts is it also seems to attract ants, at least in my garden. So I've got my sprayer here. I'm gonna spray them down and just knock off some of the ants before I take them inside. So the next step in the process is going to be to separate the petals from the seed pod and the flower. So if you pull off the individual petals, you can see that we have the flower in the middle. That's going to go in the compost and the seed pod underneath. Well, you can boil that to get pectin. I'm just going to throw that into the compost as well. I did some experiments and I was not super pleased with um, getting the pectin out of the seed pods. So I'm just going to use ready-made pectin. Show a close up here of how the petals can just be pulled off. You can see we've got the flower in the middle. It's going to go in a compost and the seed pod underneath. It's going to go in a compost as well. Now there is a bit of fruit on here. You can pull all of this off and use that in your jelly. But I've noticed that this little green layer here adds additional tartness that I don't particularly care for. Uh, so I'm just going to compost all this and only make the jelly from the petals. So now I have just a bunch of the calyx petals and I have all of the seed pods that are ready to go into compost. Uh, I've rinsed these off pretty well. There's little spiders or bugs or ants or caterpillars or God knows what dust that are on here. They just give it a rinse, get all that stuff off. And then uh, we're about ready to start processing now. This recipe calls for a one-to-one -one ratio of fruit to sugar. I have packed down two cups of the hibiscus calyxes, and I'm going to pack down another one to have four cups total of fruit, so I know I'll have to have four cups of sugar. The calyxes themselves do not have a lot of liquid in them, so I'm gonna fill this up to the two cup mark so we can boil these down and essentially steep them for the jam. Okay, I have my fruit and my water in this saucepan. I measured out four cups of sugar into this bowl here. I took a quarter cup of sugar out of this bowl and put it into the smaller bowl and I mixed it with my pectin. I'm going to let this come to a boil and then cover it, let it simmer for 15 minutes. Meanwhile, I will be sterilizing all of the jars that I'm gonna be using for the canning. 
Okay, this has been simmering for about 10 minutes now, and it's soft enough where I can use an immersion blender and just blend up a little bit of the fruit. I want to blend it all the way up because I do want a little bit of identifiable chunks in the jam. Okay, everything has been sterilized. I'm gonna swap these for just a minute so I can have the larger boiler, or the larger burner, I mean. And we need to get this up to a boil. So I'm gonna take my sugar mixture here that has the pectin in it. Mix that in. Okay, we are now at a rapid boil. So I'll add the rest of my sugar in. Okay, we got them filled and capped. Now we'll put them in to get sealed. So here we have our finished product. Uh, if anybody else has a different way to prepare hibiscus jam, leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear it.